Hey, this is Kevin Locken with Mitchell Acoustical. Today, we're gonna to take you guys through a step-by-step -step process of installing an acoustical grid ceiling. And before we start, I wanna give you guys the components of the actual grid ceiling. This is the wire. This is what carries the mains to hold the weight of the ceiling. This is the wall angle. This actually is a shelf for the grid to actually hold itself on that you screw into the drywall. This is the main, and they'll eventually have a flange on it here so you can connect larger pieces, but, this is the slot line that eventually has the T put into it to clip in there to hold the tile and the weight of the actual suspended ceiling. This is the room that we're talking about today. And the way that we typically run mains is the shortest distance with the, with the least amount of materials. So in this particular instance, I'm actually gonna run the mains from in north to south and the T's will be east to west connecting into those mains. Now that we've figured out the way that we're gonna run the mains, we actually have to talk about layout. How am I gonna center this thing and how the T's and tile actually line up. In this particular room, I'm center line tile. And what that means is I don't have a T interrupting where I'm going. This happens to be two by four grid. And so right now I know that I'm centered here and then I'm gonna pull over two foot from where my center is to find this main. Perpendicular to that wall, I have to find the T's over here. This wall actually has center line T, so I know that once I mark that, that's actually where a T is gonna tie into the wall. For aesthetic purposes, a lot of these rooms and how, they how they're designed is equal, equal borders. And so what that leads me as the installer to find out is, is it center line T? or center line tile that then I can adjust by finding the center of the room and adjusting the mains accordingly or adjusting the T's accordingly to the slot lines. So here I'm gonna go ahead and find the center of the room. Which is 164. So we know that that's 82. So now that I've got my center on my T wall, I'm gonna go four foot because T's are laid out in every two foot. Mains are in every four foot, T's are in every two foot. So I'm gonna go and lay it out because these are where I'm gonna rivet to the wall every four foot. Perpendicular to that mark, we're gonna go ahead and find this center on this side. 10 foot two, so that's five foot one. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark that center. Now, this center, I'm gonna take two foot on each side because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my mains parallel to this wall. So I've got my center mark for my mains, but I still have to go a step further with that. Now, what I have to do is I have to find the center of my mains. So I'm gonna take it two foot on either side of my center mark and write an M on there. Now, if this is a bigger room, you would typically you know, continue going with those marks. This is a smaller room, just doing it for instructional purposes. Now we're ready to set our ceiling height, and what we usually do is look on the print, see what it says, and it'll say nine foot AFF. AFF means above finished floor. So we'll typically go about three eighths higher than that to account for that finished floor because you don't know what fixtures are actually coming after your ceiling and that might butt up right to it. So I'll put a little mark there and that's where I'll start. Then I'll come about six foot off the wall and make another mark. Well, now we've got our laser and we've already got, we've already got a piece of wall molding up and the, the way that we level it is put it on the wall, turn it on, adjust the height, and then we'll go all the way across. What I usually do is screw the wall angle every eight to 16 inches, depending on how corners come together and everything else like that. I usually don't put the screws into the studs because if you have to adjust it every so often, whether there's a duct in the way, whether there was an incorrect height, it'll sometimes blow out the drywall for you. So it, you're better off not putting it in and maybe putting it in later once you're all locked in. But 
most of the ceilings will lock themselves in if you have enough screws just in the drywall. Now we're gonna go ahead and set our height for what our actual grid ceiling is gonna be in the field. And when I say the field, I mean this whole open space here and how to level it. So there's a laser card that comes with, comes with these lasers and you, you clip them onto the grid. We'll go ahead and turn this on. And what I usually do is I come down two, two inches to the center of that laser card. And then I'll, I'll clip it and you guys will see this. I'll clip it on my grid and level it down to this center mark at two inches right here. The next step is the jet line. And the jet line will actually set the tone for how I put the whole ceiling together. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and set my jet line. Since I have my marks here on the floor for my mains, I know how far to center my grid, my main, off of the wall. We're gonna come at 38 inches. I'm gonna come, take a mark, 38 inches, put it on the wall, and I'm gonna string a line from this point all the way to the other side of the wall, and then I'll do the exact same thing with the T-line coming here. And what that should do for me is that should square my grid and I can make little adjustments here and there, but that typically squares your grid for you. Now I'm gonna check my T-line for what the distance was for here and go ahead and make that my slot, which is 35 inches. These are our slot lines. And I know that I just measured this T-line back and it was 35 inches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come here, stick, stick our tape in there and pull it back and cut it to 35 inches. And you're gonna do these with both mains. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set it on my line that I set. Any of these long wires we'll go ahead and cut. And you wanna try and pull this as tight as possible. I'm actually taking the electrician's wire and his looked like it was in a spool. But we'll make, we'll make it right. It'll sit by the end. We'll go ahead and line it up with my laser. Crimp it, and I usually, I usually set my clines right on the ledge, because that's about the height of where your bend actually ends up. And I'll go ahead and I'll bend it right at the ledge, pull it through. And I'm actually not gonna tie these yet. Sometimes you can tie them when they're actually nice and taut, like this one is. This one seems to be a little bit wound up, so I have to actually put some more weight on it to get it to go. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clamp this one, and then I'll just repeat the process with a second main, put that one up, and then we'll go ahead and connect them. Now that we've got both of our mains in the air, we're ready to start stuffing T's, but you could say like, hey Kev, this is way off, but I'm gonna get that corrected as we go. So I'm gonna take this T, shove it in this corner, and I have my jet line, and I'm gonna cut it right in the center of where my jet line is. What that'll do is that'll center my main that I already have in the air. If you can see, now I've got it, it's a little bit better, and I can just adjust it with a clamp and go ahead and clamp it down. Now that this first main's straightened, we're gonna go ahead and stuff some T's so that we can go ahead and square it. And we're gonna go, if this is a two by four system, three slot lines and then a T. So one, two, three, T, which I'll start saying to myself a little bit here, one, two, three, T. The most important thing to do in grid, once it's up, is to go ahead and square it. Now, me, from my background, I know that it's 52 and a quarter, corner to corner. And what we do to use that is, we know that this is uh, 23 to the inside, 20, uh, 47 to the inside, the inside here, using Pythagorean theorem, it's 52 and a quarter. So we'll go ahead and we'll square it up. I got 52 and a quarter here, and just so I know that I'm correct, I come to the other side, and 52 and a 
half, but I think that that's just a little bit. We'll go ahead and... So now, we'll go ahead and start locking this system in. We know that this is square. I know that I've got my T on the line over here to straighten that first main. So I know that I'm in the right direction. So I'm gonna go ahead now, take my punch, punch the grid, and take my rivet and rivet this main. Now that's locked in, I can go to the next main, get this punched, and riveted. And then go on to that next T so that we can be three quarters of the way locked in. And this shouldn't go anywhere once I get to that T. This T free floating was just me looking down at the floor and kind of eyeing up where it was gonna go. So now I have to straighten it. What I'll do is I'll take my clamp and since we know that this is square, I'll go ahead, I'll put a clamp on that, I will straighten that T, and then I'll come and I'll bring this over to it. I'll eye up, making sure that this is straight, clamp that back down, pull this T off, and if you look up here, it moved, the line moved a little bit, so I have to take it and I have to adjust it just ever so slightly, give it a couple of taps. All right, now, Gonna do the exact same thing that we did to the mains. And go ahead and rivet this over here. Okay. Then what I'll do along this wall is I'll pull four foot from this edge and I'll go ahead and mark my next rivet. Everything that you wanna do in ceilings is either in two or four foot intervals. So I'll go ahead with the mains and the T's and I'll go ahead and lock them in every four foot. I'll go ahead and mark this here. Throw in a T. I'll go ahead and I'll lock that in. It's on my mark over here. I'll pull it a little bit this way. Sorry, my back's to you guys. Get that set up. Rinse and repeat. And I'll go all along this wall. I'll go all along that outside wall and get this thing all punched in. And then the last, the last part of this, setting the grid, is just putting in some of the T's. And that's not such a big deal. This is a two by four system, so there's actually not two foot T's that need to go in here. Just the fours, and then it's two by four lights and tile. Last piece of the puzzle is getting the mains to actually clip together. So what that entails is they, they move past each other just like the slot line, except it's these two that hook into each other. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of those hook ends, punch it to the back of the wall angle, and go about an inch to the inside. I'm gonna cut it. I don't measure them. You guys can actually measure from the face to the wall angle. If, you, if you're a beginner, that may be a better way to actually do it. And then I'm gonna punch these together that you should hear a clip. Okay, and now all I'm gonna do is set it on my line and go ahead and rivet it down just like I did the other four. Okay, there's only one thing left to do. Now we know that the first initial wires that started to hang my, my mains are good. So I'm gonna go ahead and twist these. And then every four foot needs to be a wire on the ceiling. That's just basic IBC code and that's the, Illinois, or that's the International Building Code. So we're gonna go ahead, 
do the exact same thing, throw up my laser, a little bit low, I can adjust it, crimp it, pull it through, and go on to the rest of the ceiling. You want to twist it about four to six times. That's how we take a ceiling start to finish. It's six or seven basic components, whether it's your layout, starting your mains, starting your wall angle, your wires, all that stuff. It all starts from the blueprint and you have to know your basic layout. Other than that, uh, we'd appreciate any comments, questions that you guys have and we'd be happy to answer them.